Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to a brand new video. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film this without fogging the lens of the camera up. I've had to clean it off like five times already, so I'm trying to breathe in this direction. I hope you guys are having a good weekend, a good start to your weekend. It is Saturday here, Saturday morning. It's about 5 o'clock. I did come into work early, and the reason for that is the last 24 hours have been a complete nightmare. So about a week ago, they were telling us that it was going to be pretty cold on Saturday, Friday night to Saturday morning. It was going to be really cold that night. So we had been preparing for that because they said it was going to be about 15 below and there's going to be wind chills and it might get down to 30 below. As it got closer, it got worse. They started saying that it was going to be 25 below with wind chills that were exceeding 60 below. We've never had anything like that here before, so needless to say, we freaked out. We tried as much as we could to get this barn uh, as tight as possible just to make sure that it was warm enough for the girls. And last night was the night. So. It ended up getting down to about 23 below, but with the wind chill, it, was, it ended up being a little better than they said. It was about 50 below, but still incredibly cold. I actually didn't even, I actually had to have a ride to work because my vehicle did not start. It didn't even turn over. It started last night, but this morning, nothing. It didn't even turn over. I've never seen it this cold in my life. The point of this video was I just kind of wanted to show you guys how the barn fared in this really terrible weather that I've never seen before. My mother actually said she saw somewhere that it was once in a generation kind of cold. So I just wanted to show you guys how we made out with that. Uh, but first, obviously, I will introduce a couple girls to you guys. Right now, they are just eating their wrapped bale. We actually bought a wrapped bale in last night. My camera's fogging up already, guys. We actually did bring a wrapped bale in last night just to make sure that it wouldn't freeze because when it gets cold like this, the wrapped bales do freeze. So we did bring one in last night and make sure that it was inside all night long so that, that we would actually be able to go around with one this morning. And also, we didn't want to have to open the barn to go outside for any reason because it is extremely cold. The wind is just insane. So we actually didn't do sawdust. We didn't go get a dry bale. So right now, they are eating their wrapped bale first. That is why they are eating that first. So introducing a couple girls to you guys. This right here is Gail. She is a 13-year-old Jersey. She's a purebred Jersey. Uh, we've had her as long as I've worked here, she's been here. Something about her would be she just calved about two weeks ago. She's doing extremely well. Didn't have any issues calving, calved on her own, had a beautiful little heifer. Something else about her would be she was actually our last cow on silage to have a twisted stomach. The vet wasn't sure if he wanted to operate on her because he told us it was a good chance that her stomach was going to retwist because she was so old and jerseys have a high probability of retwisting anyway. Uh, but we took a gamble and we decided to do the surgery and it's been about six years and here she is. So, so she triumphed that and she's still around to tell the story. So that is Gail. It's felt like the equipment company if you're wondering. So our next lovely lady, this right here is Abby. She is a Holstein, I think she's a Holstein shorthorn cross. We're not 100% sure. We did buy her from a cattle dealer when she was a heifer. She wasn't even bred, I don't believe. We got her about six years ago, so I would assume she's about eight. She is the sweetest. Something about her is that she just absolutely loves to give you hugs. If you walk up next to her by her neck, she'll wrap her neck around you and give you a little hug, and it's just the cutest thing ever. Okay, so now for how this morning went. Like I said, I got here early. My dad actually gave me a ride. He dropped me off here a little bit early, about 15 minutes early, just so we could check on everything. So we came down. The barn is plenty warm. It's a little bit colder than it usually is, obviously. Only issues we had was at the end of the barn, hi, this water bowl right here was frozen, and this one right here was frozen and three, the first three on the other side were also frozen. So what we did was I just took a pail of hot water and a cup and we just put the hot water, just dumped it on them until they thawed out. And then we realized that the water still wasn't coming. So we came down here, everything in the corner was fine. So that wasn't the problem. Um, probably because it was leaking around that fan, this pipe up here did freeze. It probably comes up around that door too, but that did freeze so we just um, <laughs> we actually just stuck the space heater in the bucket of the skid steer and stuck it up there as close as we could get to it and turned that on and it thawed out in about two minutes and the girls have water now. I don't think it had been frozen for long because it started really fast. But so far that is the only issue we've had this morning. Everything else seems to be going extremely well. The cows are all acting fine. They all act completely normal. They don't even act like it's cold out. Everything is a-okay. Thank goodness. So I wanted to take you guys around and kind of show you some of the things we did to prepare for this kind of weather as best we could because you guys know this barn is 60 years old and it's just really really hard to keep a barn that old 
warm, especially when you have record-breaking cold temperatures. So we'll take a walk around and I'll show you guys what we did to prevent any kind of problems. I'm gonna have to put my hat back on, my ears are getting cold. So starting at the start, the first thing that we did was obviously, you guys know that we have these roll-up curtains on either ends of the barn. We just have a board hooked to the bottom to them. You can roll it up and then there's a chain that hooks to a nail on top and it just stays there all summer long. So we rolled that down and we hook it here but the wind was so bad that it actually broke these so they won't stay anymore. So we just kind of shoved these bale wrap things in the corners where the air does come through. It doesn't look good but it does help more than you would think. Something else is the wind was getting at these doors so we took a couple eye hooks, just some simple eye hooks. We've got one hooked to the corner here, one hooked to the corner over there and then there's one connecting the doors in the middle just so these doors can't push out and let any cold air in. So that is something that we did to make sure the front stays warm. You can see the whole side of this barn over here towards the wind. The whole wall is frosted. It's frosted up by the windows. Uh, last night we could see, you can see kind of right there, you can see the cold air coming in right there. Last night there was a lot of cold air coming in above these windows because they're very old windows. They are the original windows. So I just took some bale wrap and just shoved them up above the windows. Not every one, just like every three or four just to make sure that it cut down on that wind chill just a little bit but not made the barn too tight so that it was going to be a problem. Obviously that wouldn't have been an issue because you can see that the whole wall is completely frosted. It's just unbelievable weather. You can still see the air coming through those windows but it was the best we could do so we did stuff some stuff about those windows. This hammer is just covered in frost. So another thing that we did is this barn has eight hay holes, four on either side, because it used to feed square bales, so they just had a bunch of square bales upstairs. I can't remember how many Brent said. I think he said, I think he said that they used to put something like 12,000 up there or something. So they would just throw them down the length of the barn and then they would strew them in front of the cows. So since we don't use those anymore in the winter, we just have um, hinged OSB doors that we flop down on them but we did notice that the air was still getting around them so last night I went up and we had old pieces of carpet that we had cut out so we just put those on top of them and then we banked some of the hay that was up there we just put that on top of them went down the whole length of the barn and did that so the hay holes are tight you can see there's no air coming down through there so that is great so we did that if you guys have seen this before this is in the middle of the barn there's a door here that goes outside so we just put a tarp over it and we noticed that there was a lot of air coming underneath the bottom of it, so we just pushed some old hay that the cows didn't want. We pushed that up against the bottom just to make sure that it was covering bring all that air coming through, and it did stop it quite a bit, I think. So another reason we did that was to keep this little chicklet warm. Uh, we still do have her. She is going on Sunday, so that's going to be sad. She just had her milk, so she's like all dunged out. But she stayed really warm last night. She's not even shivering this morning, so she's nice and comfortable. We did the same thing over there to that door as we did to this one. Just banked some hay against the bottom of it. Let's see, what else? So this little man is doing well. He's not cold at all. He was cold the other morning when it was 20 below, so I was really worried about him. But I didn't clean him out. I was going to clean him out, but I figured he had a lot of hay that he's dragged in there. So I just figured he'd be warmer with all the hay that he's dragged in here than he would be if I cleaned him out and just put sawdust in there. So I'm going to clean him out probably the next few days when it starts warming up. But for right now, he's going to stay nice and warm in all the hay that he's dragged into his pen because he is really annoying now. So here we have our tarp going to the outside on the back of the barn. So we just hooked all the grommets to these screws that we put in. And that stays nice and tight up against, up against that door. Except for over here where stick face over there um, unhooks him because he's bored, I guess. So that's really annoying. He's in the teenager phase of cow years where he's just like, you just kind of want to strangle him, but... This tarped in area stayed really warm where our pressure tank is for the water that runs the girls' water bowls and also runs the gutter. And what we just did to make sure that that didn't freeze for sure was we just hooked a small hose to it. You can see the air bubbles going through there. And we turned it on just a little bit, like a trickle, and we run it into the gutter just to make sure that water is going a little bit. So it's always running through there so it doesn't have time to freeze. So that helped a lot. There was quite a bit of water in the gutter when we came in this morning, but better than dealing with frozen pipes. So, except that pipe, obviously, because I've told you guys that froze. Um, you can see this door that goes out to our sawdust bin. We also lined that with hay because we are not using that sawdust bin right now because we have sawdust out front. I just took some bill wrap and shoved it in these holes right here because it was leaking around the edge of that door. Because bill wrap is good for everything. You can stick it anywhere. Case in point, Brent covered the fans with them. 
They shut off yesterday morning because it cooled down throughout the day. It was about 8 below when we finished milking yesterday morning, so the fans just shut off. So we covered those over. We didn't even bother since it's so cold in here. There's plenty of air for the girls. So those have been off since yesterday and covered with film. So no air is getting through there. And I guess that is just about it. You can see we covered that. That's pretty much all we could do inside the barn to make sure that it was as warm as possible. And I mean, the girls seemed comfortable, so I think it was a win. But I hope we never have to deal with this again because I just, you can't even stay outside without just feeling like you're freezing your face. You, it takes your breath away. It's so bad. I don't know how people live in places where it's like this all the time. Kudos to you guys. I don't know how you do it. So we also did some other things outside to just prepare, so I will take you guys out and show you that, but I'm not sure how long I'll be able to stay out there, and I'm not sure if my camera screen is going to fog up going out there, so I may just open the door and show you. By the way, the milk room is heated, so that was fine. All the water in there was fine and everything, but um, Brent hooked the Massey up to the battery charger. Wow, it's cold out here. Um, and he also backed it up to the generator and hooked it up just to be sure that that was there and ready just in case we needed it Because as you can tell it is extremely windy and it's still windy. I just freaked out. I'm like, where's my truck? I'm like, never mind um, Anyway, he brought that up and he's got the battery charger on it The diesel fuel has been conditioned and he's also got the Kubota hooked in to a block heater over there by the shop And the Massey is also hooked up to a block heater So that's all ready to go just in case we do need that. Something else that we did was the other day we went and got another load of sawdust because the sawdust truck is going to get fixed, so yay. You can see we had it stuffed a piece of cardboard in that window instead of the plastic. That seems to work better, but it was still a pretty cold trip, so we just wanted to make sure that we did have extra sawdust just in case the truck is over there getting the window put in and it's longer than they expected. We just wanted to make sure we were prepared, so we did get an extra load of sawdust. Now I've got to go inside because I can't feel my face. We also, yeah, it fogged up. I knew it would. We also did get the skid steer fixed. The lift arms work on it great now. You guys probably already knew that because I said we brought a bail in, but it works perfect now. So, so glad to have that back. That is very helpful to have that back. But now we must take a coffee break. Somebody said that I hadn't mentioned coffee in the last video, and I must be slipping because I always remember my coffee. So, um, I have to go take a coffee break right now, then we're gonna milk the girls and just hope the rest of the morning goes as well as this morning did. I am just so grateful that frozen water was the only thing. That is so minor compared to what it could have been in, because this is just brutal temperatures, so it could have been a lot, lot worse. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys are having better weather where you are. I hope it's warm and you're staying safe and well. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below. Keep it real, keep farming, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.